In a recent video, I demonstrated my escape room control software, which is based on Node Red. And one of the features it has is to play a background music soundtrack and also to play sound effects. And they can either be manually triggered by a games master from a sort of a control panel dashboard, or they can be automatically triggered by an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi when some part of the gameplay is achieved by players. But Node Red doesn't only play pre recorded sound effects like WAV files and MP3 files. If you take the audio out node from the Node Red dashboard and pass it a text string, it will actually use a dynamic text to speech synthesis engine installed on the host computer to dynamically read out any text message or any value that is sent to it. So this means you can actually create uh, voices in games, a synthetic voice in the game that is based on user input or perhaps create a dynamic clue delivery system based on the actual state of the game at the moment. It doesn't have to be pre-recorded. Here's how. So I've got the um, Node Red editor running here and if I scroll down the palette on the left hand side I'm looking for the dashboard set of nodes. So I've got the dashboard module installed. Um, if you haven't already got that installed, you can go to it by going to uh, settings, palette, install, and then uh, searching for the dashboard here. So make sure that you have the Node Red dashboard installed. Uh, that will give you this set of nodes here, and we're going to choose the audio out node, which is here. So if I now double click on that to configure it, um, we have to assign the audio out node to a group, even though it doesn't have a kind of visual component as such, because it's part of the dashboard set of nodes. Um, it has to be assigned to a group on the dashboard. So we'll just put it in um, the main group of the home page of the dashboard. You won't be able to see it there, but it just needs to be assigned to, to something. And what that means is that when any client is connected to that page of the dashboard, that will have the audio out played. So the audio out is not played in the editor, in any client connected to the editor. It's connected to any client that is connected to that page of the dashboard. And what they will hear, um, well, we'll choose the voice. I'm on a Windows PC, so I've got a, a choice of uh, Windows-based TTS uh, engines here. If you're on a Raspberry Pi or, or a Linux machine, you'd have um, the built-in uh, engines from those machines instead. So let's go with that one. And well done. And then to start with, let's just pass in a, a static text string to start with. Uh, so actually, well, I'll tell you what, let's make a button. So we'll add a button onto the dashboard, connect that to the audio out, and we'll make the button part of the group as well. When the button is clicked, we'll send a string that says, you clicked the button. And uh, that is it. So we'll now deploy that, go to our dashboard, and we'll see we have a button. And when we click on it, what we hear? You clicked the button. Fantastic. Right, so um, that's all very well, but you know, we could have just pre-recorded that as an audio file, as a WAV file and got a voice actor to do it or something like that. What's more interesting is to create dynamic uh, text for this to be read out. So to do that, let's uh, add a function node instead at the beginning. And what we're going to do is we're going to create like a, a game timer that's going to count down and every I don't know minute 10 seconds when there's 30 seconds left whatever we can make the uh, engine automatically speak however many seconds are remaining so the first thing we'll do is we'll create a variable called start time and if the flow is already running so if a start time has already been assigned we'll retrieve that from the context of the flow uh, or if it hasn't what we'll do is we'll just get the payload of the message that started this flow. So basically it says, if, we already, if, if we've already set the flow off, let's get what time it was started. And if we haven't already set the, set the flow off, let's get the current time as the start time and we'll assign it to there. Um, and then let's actually uh, set the start time if that was the case. So we'll set the start time as start time just to make sure that we've actually uh, saved that value and then what we'll do is we'll get the current time so that is going to be equal to the payload that is sent into this function 
and then what we do is we work out how much time has elapsed which is going to be equal to whatever the current time is uh, take off whatever the time at which the flow has started and that is going to be a value in milliseconds so let's divide that by a thousand uh, to get that in seconds uh, and then what we'll do so we've got the the time that the the game has been running for in seconds so let's say this is a I don't know a 60 second game or whatever just so we have a sensible amount of time that I can demonstrate to you so we'll take that time away from 60 to get how much time is remaining and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to because I don't want I don't want to have like a synthetic voice read out every second uh, you know 59 seconds there 58 seconds there that would get quite annoying so let's just round it to be every uh, 10 seconds maybe so I use the um, math.seal function so the ceiling is going to round the remaining time up uh, so if we divide it by 10 and then multiply it by 10 again that's the effect of, of uh, rounding basically because it's an integer value and it would help if I spelt it right um, we're dividing by 10 and then multiplying by 10 again is a way of kind of truncating off any remaining seconds that will get the closest uh, 10 second value and then we'll round that up as well and what we'll then do is we'll pass that time on um, as part of the message flow to any nodes that are in the flow after this one uh, and then we'll put the node status we'll just so node status is a way of displaying uh, in the editor um, kind of any uh, any additional values it's it's a little bit like kind of using a serial print or something like that on an Arduino code uh, just so you can monitor what values are going on um, so I'm just going to kind of do a little gray dot and most importantly in this bit we're actually going to put some uh, text down there so we'll put uh, we'll put rounded time actually that would be the most sensible one to monitor so that's basically a way of saying uh, in the editor what value we're monitoring oops I've got one too many things there that's better um, and we are I think that's probably oh no I'll tell you what we did so we only want to carry on the flow if there is time remaining so if the rounded time is greater than or equal to zero what we'll do is we'll return the message so return message means kind of uh, pass the message on the flow onto the next node and they can do something with it and we want to take that one away so we only want to carry on the flow if there's some time remaining so uh, we'll, we'll set the start time of the flow uh, we'll work out the current time work out the difference between them to get the elapsed time and also divide by a thousand to get in seconds take that away from 60 to get the remaining time in the game and then round that to the nearest 10 seconds so what I'm expecting this to do is going to go uh, you know 60 50 40 30 20 10 0 and then because of this line here after that it's going to stop um, in fact what we what we could do is um, not only uh, stop sort of it then we can actually send a, a different message perhaps okay so we need to uh, trigger that function node um, regularly so we're going to put an inject node before that and we're going to say so the inject node pass the timestamp uh, inject once when the flow starts and then repeat every second after that but we don't want to pass the output of the function node straight to the audio output because um, even though this is rounding up to the closest 10 seconds it's still sending that output out every second because that's how often it's being triggered um, so what we'll do instead is we'll put in a uh, report by exception node along the way so report by exception basically only allows a value through uh, when it has changed so we'll block the message from going on unless the value changes. So if this repeat sends, you know, there's 10 seconds left, there's 10 seconds left, there's 10 seconds left, this will only carry on the flow if that value actually changes to something else, which is what we want. Um, but we don't want to check whether the payload has changed. What we want to check is whether the rounded time has changed. And only when it has uh, will we carry on. And then uh, lastly, before sending that to the audio out, 
This was just sending the value of the rounded time itself. So it's just a number, you know, 60, 50, 30. It might be a bit nicer if we kind of formed that into a sentence. Uh, so let's put one more function node in along the way. And we'll take the output of this, put it into that. And uh, so what we can do here is something like um, if the rounded time is greater than zero. So we've got some some seconds left at least. Uh, let's say that the payload that we're going to pass onto that audio output is something like you have um, plus message dot remaining time plus uh, seconds left or something like that. Uh, so we'll say if message so you have that many seconds left. Um, else, uh, let's say something like message dot payload equals you have run out of time. So we've got two branches here. This message here will be uh, sent every time that one of those 10 second boundaries is sent. We'll, we'll go into that one there. Uh, and when the final message is sent, when it's equal to zero, we'll go to this one. And beyond that, we won't get any more messages anyway, because this one stops uh, sending after the, the rounded time gets down to zero anyway. So if we connect them all in a row, and oh, the last thing I'm gonna do is on the audio out, yeah, I'm gonna put play audio when Windows not is focused, just so I can show you what's happening here and on the dashboard at the same time. Um, now, I think I might just need to do one more thing actually, is that my dashboard now only has an audio out element on it. And I think it might need some sort of visual element just for the dashboard to be rendered. So I'll just add a template element there. That's not gonna do anything other than just display um, in words what the audio output is going to say out loud as well. Uh, so let's try that. And if I deploy that, um, what we should see, hopefully. Why is that not going? Inject after every sentence. Oh, yeah, that's all right. That's all right. Uh, let's look at this one. Uh, ah, hang on. Right, <laughs> this line here. So I've passed on a message in the flow called remaining time. Uh, but I've set that to rounded time, so that was uh, poor on me to not keep the same uh, message structure there. So message dot remaining time should be in there. What did I call it from then on? No, I called it rounded time again. Ugh. This is what you get for trying to do stuff um, too quickly. But I did call it remaining time there. And uh, here we've got, yeah, so okay, let me try that again. You have 60 seconds left. That's better. Right, so you can see we've got the counter here that's giving us the uh, rounded time as calculated. This is only allowing the message you have 50 seconds left. through when it changes. And if we go to the dashboard itself, you can see actually it's the template element there is displaying the text. You have 40 seconds left. Um, and the audio out is um, playing it at the same time. Uh, so this is a really handy way you can create you have 30 seconds left. Dynamic uh, audio that reads out either a, a variable, as I'm doing here, that's calculated as part of the game flow, or maybe it's response to user input. You have 20 seconds left. So if players are pressing, um, you know, keys on a keypad and you want them to, to say different things or a calculation or a dynamically generated hint system. You have even. 10 seconds left. Um, you know, it's a little bit of a computerized voice, but that would fit in some scenarios if you were on a, a sci-fi scenario on a space station or something like that. You have run out of time. Then the quality of that speech synthesis is perfectly good for like the ship's computer or something like that. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's today's tip is how to create um, text-to-speech synthesis uh, using Node-RED that can be triggered either automatically or via an input from an Arduino or, or anything like that. And you can see here we're still calculating because we've got into negative numbers now. Uh, we've run out of time. This is still being calculated but it's not being sent any further down the flow. So we're not hearing you have minus 30 seconds left or anything like that.